founded in 2007, B2 Gold is the world's new senior gold producer. Headquartered in Vancouver, Canada, today B2 Gold has five operating gold mines and numerous exploration and development projects in various countries, including Nicaragua, Colombia, Burkina Faso, Mali, Namibia and the Philippines. Ten years ago, B2 Gold had zero gold production. In 2019, they will produce nearly one million ounces. What we do today affects more people and more of our environment than ever before. Outside of their core business of mining, B2 Gold is inspiring growth and transformation. What is B2 Gold doing for the people and the planet? Who are the people making it happen? And what is B2 Gold doing to give back to the communities and countries where they operate? Well, I think it's changing people's lives, but not only changing people's lives in the context of what we're doing in terms of mining and when we're doing it, it's this idea of, of creating sustainable jobs, sustainable opportunities. And that to me is the key thing, not only changing people's lives in the tenure of the mine, but changing people's lives and therefore the lives of their families for a very long time to come. And hopefully this is part of the, the, the movement of where you can take something like the creation of a mine and by working very closely, transparency with the local communities, find out what can we do together and if we can do that for other young people, and I hear that in four countries and five minds, that's pretty inspirational and it makes me feel uh, very good about what we do. So I, I take a lot of satisfaction out of that. When I joined B2, we talked a lot about, is there, is there something we can do to make this a more responsible company? And I think from the top down, it's always been very easy, from the board of directors on down, very easy to promote this concept that, that the community should be involved in every phase of the project and the community should benefit from the project. As an industry we're doing and the changes we're affecting, it's really unbelievable. The whole concept of sustainable mining, right? What does that even mean? You have a finite resource that you know eventually is gonna be gone. How can it be sustainable? It can only be sustainable if you take that resource, use it wisely, and create additional sustainable activities, things like education, things like increase in health in the population, increase in livelihoods outside of the mining industry. Those are the types of things that really are, that's the only things about mining that is sustainable. That's what makes me passionate about mining. There are so many countries, but we only, we only have one ocean. The Coral Triangle is a marine area located in the Western Pacific Ocean. It hosts an astonishing amount of marine life. 100 million people are dependent on the Coral Triangle for food, sources of livelihood, and even protection from storms. But unfortunately, 97% of our coral reefs are under threat. The destructive methods of fishing, like cyanide fishing, dynamite fishing, and even overfishing, have greatly damaged the coral habitat and decimated the fish stocks. Being born in this island, I can see that there is really a great potential for the corals to recover and be better than what it was before. This project is huge. This is why B2 Gold's Mas Bate Gold project has become an active leader in environmental stewardship here in the Philippines. Working on the reef rehabilitation project, it's part of my job really, but this is home for me. The Regala brothers, Yorcel, Rogelio, and Darwin are ex-dynamite fishermen, now working hand-in-hand -hand with the environmental unit at B2 Gold 
and with the local municipality of Masbate Island to regenerate their local coral reef. Yes, na sa mga sainhari na mita na medyo nag talaga nag down ng mga corals. Kura kami iba na kun talaga na buhay amo talaga ni ang buno. Pagpasabog sa dagat. Nagsimula noong uh, September 2017 kung saan pinagplanuhan ng Aroroy at saka ng Pilmenera Resources Corporation kung ano ang maganda para sa environment ng Aroroy. Ang magandang nangyari dito is unang-una nakontrol natin yung blast fishing in the area. Mayroon tayong inintroduce na bagong technology na pwedeng gawing aralan. I'm an environmentalist with my heart. I see it as not just like a job, but more like a passion to protect the environment. It's just an amazing work to do. Reef ball modules, it's made of concrete. The bottom of it also is designed to bury itself in the sand so it doesn't move. The reef ball modules are the homes for the fishes, but we need corals also, corals that were damaged by typhoon or blasting. So we collect those corals and then we plant them in coral plaques. The corals grow on its own, they're alive. It will attach itself to the reef ball. In five years, it's going to be a huge difference from the rubbles to like a garden of coral. So fish will just swim around them. And in just three to four months, it's growing like a centimeter. And the survival of corals is 80%. And so it's really growing. The sea is helping itself, but we also need intervention. We need to help them out. Ayan nga ninyo, ito na sa pagbutang dito, damo na ni Sda, na naga, ano, damo na naga sulot na ni Sda. Dito, dito sila yung butang tanang mga ano, damo na na ni Sda naga, sorulit-sorulit sa mga buo, sa mga Red Bull. Yan, kita naman kung may mga lansya na nag-aage, baruto, na base magsulot sa MPE, amin ang ginakuha na naman pag abot sa aga. O, yan nag-aage, sir. Pag, pag malinaw talaga, nag-react sila sila, oh, damon isda. Sabi ko, ayoko niyan. Pag kami lang, hindi namin kaya yan. Pero pag may filminera tayo nakasama, kakayanin namin yan. That's why naiput up ito. Pag yun ang pagtutulungan. Walang iwanan. This project, the MPA, is first in the region to be supported by private sector. What more if we have other um, MPAs and just support it? Filminera is a local company. It's the one that owns the tenements here in Masbate and also it owns the local permits here in the Philippines. These projects have far-reaching long-term implications. When the company is gone, maybe generations from now, these projects will still be there. These are the projects that future generations will remember. Whenever I'm home, I tell my niece and nephews about the project that we do so that I can still in their minds that what we are doing here is really important. You don't realize just how important it is when until you see your own staff who are locals take hold of this program with a passion to see it succeed because they recognise the value to their community members. They're not going anywhere, so there's potentially huge multiplier effects from what we're doing. Mga anak na mo, may mga anak kami. Diba? Maka... Kuan, maka sublisin na makinabang. Diba? Nanti kelinci, tunggu anak lada ini. 
Bon, la pensée derrière le, le projet du nouveau Fadougou était surtout déjà de montrer que, mais avant tout, nous sommes là pour le long terme. Donc nous avons, donc nous avons depuis le départ, enfin, quand nous avons décidé de pouvoir de, de, de déménager le village, de construire un nouveau village pour ces populations, c'est quelque chose qui ne pouvait se faire sans euh, le concours effectif de tous les villageois, donc toutes les parties prenantes. Donc il y a eu beaucoup de réunions, des concertations avec toutes les parties prenantes, donc disons la communauté, les femmes, les jeunes, les notables de la société. Well, the overall scope of this project was not to just build uh, a new village just with B2 Gold people. The idea was to get the village involved, have them take ownership, to train them. B2 Gold is always about taking things to the next level. Donc, une formation, ça va dessus. Maçonnerie, en écrivissage, en entrepreneuriat. Donc, en classe de formation, en examen, ok. Donc, maçonnerie là, ils sont sur un certain grade premier au-delà, parmi 46 personnes. On comptera parce que ni Renaud Chouan ni parce que Moussouwa mentionne que Mali connaît. C'est à la compte quoi. Donc, directement, mais c'est qu'on va sonner quoi. Sadio Americo is one of those success stories from our construction team. She was always willing to learn. She's got very great construction management skills and scheduling skills, which are very important to us. These men and women have never been on a construction site before, never had any exposure to their trade and discipline. And what we've accomplished in about 15 months is building over 700 structures at a very high quality. Mais je pense que c'est très simple. La clé de tout développement durable est au niveau de la formation. C'est-à-dire que nous avons mis l'accent dessus, nous avons formé des gens et nous continuons à les dire que quand on croit en quelque chose, on peut le faire. Donc pour cela, moi j'appelle Fadougou la perle de la Falémé. Nous avons chef de couvert qui l'année de Contara. Tel que nous avons passé ma foi, ah, je m'en bats une année, qu'elle est née, Moussou Kachaya, née de Tarakane Bla, Moro Doukuna, non loupé, et au Moussoutou là, n'est pas le café. Donc, vous avez un Moro Chaya, à quel moment vous avez un Moro Binan, n'est pas café là. Donc, vous êtes mané avec un compta, n'y a rien. All right, guys, we're getting really close to the big day, and this site is looking really great, and you guys are a really big part of that. Let's keep up the good work. The site's looking awesome. Thank you very much for the hard work. The coal mine and the Fadugu village are examples of what people can do if they respect each other and work together. Vive la population Canada Mali. Il y a un gars qui a fait des parcelles vidées. Il y a un cas d'une Allez, il y a des maçons, il y a des maçons, il y a des maçons, il y a des maçons. Donc, il y a des maçons, il y a des maçons. Il y a des maçons, 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 il y a des maçons. Actual, pues ya soy un productor de, de que ya producimos leche y carne, pues, ¿verdad? 
de que Ana, sí, pues yo, pues ya mi papá ya era una persona que ya era ganadera. Porque antes, pues mi papá, él, cuando compró la finca, era una finca que no estaba en condiciones bonitas como la pueden ver hoy, ¿verdad? Y lo más feliz que me hacía, pues, era andar recogiendo, levantarme temprano. Y después no solo eso, sino que se trata de ordeñar, que bañar animales, apartarlos, andar viendo los animales en los potreros. La actividad más importante se trata de la ganadería, sí. Eso lo este, muero yo, heredero a mis hijos, mis hijos eran a mis nietos y sí, entonces hay que enseñarlo a como me enseñó mi papá a dominar esta finca. Entonces, productores de la zona de La Libertad y Santo Domingo se acercan a la empresa eh, y nos indican que tienen una necesidad y una problemática identificada alrededor del desarrollo del sector lechero. Vendiendo un poquito mejor tu producto, pues, y realmente te le bajan, uno se siente un poco, pues, de fortalecido un poco, porque cuando la, la, la leche baja tu producto que vos vendes, verá, diario, se te baja, pues, claro, eso es un pacto grande para su familia, porque también, este... No depende también de su familia, sino que depende de sus trabajadores, de uno. Había días que, por ejemplo, de un momento a otro había un bajón, ¿verdad? que tal vez estábamos, no, nos estaban pagando el, el galón de leche a, a, a 25 Córdoba y de un momento a otro aparecía en el recibo que nos estaban pagando a 20. El acopio de leche es un proyecto que nació de los productores, ¿verdad? fue una idea de los propios productores y Bedocol eh, decidió apoyarlo. El desarrollar medios de vida alternativos a la minería, pero también que fuesen sostenibles a largo plazo. Y entonces venimos, los reunimos y fuimos a hacer una petición, ¿verdad? de que necesitábamos, de que si los podían dar un apoyo para hacer un acopio. Pues si fíjense que realmente este, nosotros pues fue eso de la noche a la mañana, pues verdad que todo fue increíble, pues verdad. Bedo Gold decide colaborar con el proyecto de acopio lechero, en primer lugar porque era una problemática obvia, pero una problemática también identificada desde la comunidad misma. Se identificaba como un elemento clave para poder dinamizar la economía local. Cuando se pone un acopio lechero, cuando hay lugares donde uno puede comercializar la leche, el, este, el productor se siente un poco más fuerte, un poco más apoyado, un poco más desahogado, podríamos decir, porque eh, tiene principalmente a nivel de todo el año un mejor precio. Lo otro es de que nos ayuda a los productores de nuestro municipio a que este, nos entusiasme a invertir en nuestra finca, en el mejoramiento de nuestro, del ganado, en el mejoramiento de la finca para tener una mayor producción y así mismo este, desarrollarlo. El acopio de la imagen y todo eso es que te, te ayuda porque sabes que tenés momentos que cuando están bajos los precios del mercado, pues aquí están mantenidos siempre en el precio. Lo principal para mí esto fue que logramos construir el acopio. Y, y lo otro logro que podríamos mencionar es que el productor se mostró interesado en capacitarse, en realmente producir leche de calidad. Tiene la oportunidad de, de, de conversar, de hablar con las personas, de conocerse más con los productores, de cambiar experiencia uno de, 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 de lo que uno tiene en su finca, de, de que lo que ha vivido, de lo que aplica en el medicamento, de lo que yo aplico en mi, en mi finca. Entonces lo, lo sentimos bonito porque lo compartimos, pues, ¿verdad? Hoy por hoy estamos hablando de que más de 100 productores forman parte del acopio, lo que termina beneficiando de forma indirecta a más de 500 personas que incluyen sus familiares. Y no solamente a los familiares, pero también a la comunidad misma por la dinámica económica que genera. El establecimiento de alianza entre las comunidades, la empresa y el gobierno son vitales para el desarrollo sostenible. Antes sentí yo que, que le voy a papá, fíjate, la papá le digo, yo siento ahora le digo como que, como que vivimos mejor, ¿verdad? Como que vivimos en menos pobreza, pues, ¿verdad? Se siente el cambio cuando ya tus cosas las, las cambias, sentís el cambio de vida diferente. Pienso mejorar mejor la finca todavía. Quiero, estoy empeñado en sembrar sacatera, buscar una picadora, tratar de, 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 de cuidar más el, el, el ganado para que así sea más productivo. Realmente quiero empeñarme también un poco en no tener mucho, pero tener calidad. Yes.
a land of wide open spaces So many, many, many faces This land of wide open spaces So many beautiful faces Namibia absolutely amazing to to see what we've achieved from here. It gives you a bird's eye view of, of what this mine has done and uh, how we've managed to get back to the country, to communities. And it's really only from the air that you get an idea of how the nature reserve has been fully recovered from an overgrazed cattle post to, to what it is today. Down there, there's some crazy wildebeest that are bashing around. Let's take a look at them. Well, Beta Gold had the vision to look at the diversity of, of wildlife here in Namibia. We wanted to do something that would recover the environment back in, into the state in which we had found it and convert the, the five farms into a nature reserve. And here we are sitting in the Ochikoto Nature Reserve. Not only has it been an education centre for children to teach them about the, the beauty and the value of the biodiversity, the wildlife, the fauna, the flora that we have around here, but it's become a centre of learning for literally everybody, all conservation, environmental groups, for scientific groups through our little shop of physics that we operate here. The amount of requests that we get for bookings for people that want to come to the education center, that want to come and experience the Ochikoto Nature Reserve, like the Little Shop of Physics, for instance, where they learn wonderful things about the environment, about how the laws of physics work. As a result, they walk away here with a different vision, probably for their lives as well. What we did was we invited the Ministry of Education and we've now put together a fantastic program that is totally aligned with the national curriculum. You will have engineers born out of that, that really understands how physics and the world around them works. And they see all these possibilities in terms of career choices. If we do this with this generation, imagine what kind of people we would generate in the future. So this is ultimately the goal. And with our mining activities, we're always extremely environmentally conscious, always trying to do the right thing. On the left-hand side, the new solar plant providing free electricity to the entire mine and to the nature reserve, of course. As a metallurgical manager, my job is to make gold, and for me to be able to do that, I need lots and lots of power. The plant is the highest consumer of power. We consume about 94% of the total energy that's generated here at Ochikoto b Gold Mine. Well, we started looking at the solar plant because we happen to be living in a country with one of the highest solar radiance levels in the world. And on a really sunny day, like today, 50% of that energy comes from the solar plant. In 2019, we're looking at saving up to 13% of the fuel cost. Everything went on smoothly. Now we're using solar power, edge of all power, without seeing any difference at all. Yeah. Gold production is going on as usual. You don't see a difference. And that's amazing. Cutting transportation costs. We're looking at cutting emissions involved with the transportation of this edge of all. We're looking at reducing accidents on the roads. Yeah. We're reducing GHG emissions or carbon emissions, like you said. So we're looking at the next 20, 25 years. Yeah. Or even beyond. And that's a legacy we're going to leave behind when this mine closes one day, John. Yeah. It's a big legacy for B2Gold. The idea of building the solar farm, whereby we can manage the revenue that comes in through the sale of electricity and, and all the different revenue generation possibilities that we have through our nature reserve here, would then one day be used for our ongoing corporate social investment programs long after the mine is shut down. And these are all assets that we are leaving for Namibia. And these are the legacies that we are leaving for Namibia. And this is something as B2 Gold that we can be so, so proud of. It really is remarkable what, what one could do with, with a bit of vision and, and with a company and directors that are, are all for giving back to the country and community. will allow the animals to thrive. We have here an incredible biodiversity to 
exist for long after we're gone. So if we can, through part of what we're doing, create opportunities for people around the world where they get the opportunity to learn some skills or do something that gives them the opportunity, to me that's one of the keys. That's the inspiration, is seeing the results of what you do and that it's actually working. That uh, thinking outside the box and, and, and living by our core principles of fairness, respect and transparency, uh, it's working. And so it's nice to see milestones along the way that I guess reconfirm your belief in your strategies.